aspects of 10 days um, that just came in the original vision um, that, that I saw in 2004 was seeing a picture of a city uh, that had stopped everything for 10 days. And the city was radiating, like glowing with the presence of God. And, uh, and I knew in this city like that things would never be the same. People had taken time off from their work. They were not doing the normal life things. They were just seeking the face of God. And um, that's something we haven't really seen happen yet in a city. But I'm here with Kelly um, and Greg just to talk a little bit about what that could look like to see a city stop everything, to seek the face of God for 10 days. Um, maybe we can just talk personally. Um, Kelly, what's happened in you personally during seasons when you've, you've just set aside time just to be with God in that way? It's prayer and fasting, a combination of those two, is such an amazing tool that God uses to personally convict us of the ways that we've fallen short of Him. and and lead us to a place of greater depth of intimacy with the Father. Um, I know in, in 10 days in the past, um, it's just a time where each day God is revealing something new to you and you just start to become more and more in love with, with God. And, and even though that's sometimes a prayer, it's kind of like you're sludging through, but sometimes they're just so intimate and by the end you're just so in love with God you don't want to do anything else um, and just how that changes you and shapes you and extends to your personal relationships and and your church and just imagining how God changes us as individuals in these seasons and then how that reverberates across um, the city um, and then thinking about how that would happen if a whole city shut down what could God do with a city that really shuts down to seek God? Yeah, yeah, it would be amazing. I know personally, kind of similar stories. Like you, you come in and it's not like there's anything specifically wrong, but mm -hmm. it's, it's the stuff that's under the surface that God begins to work on. And it's a cumulative thing. It doesn't, you know, if you did it for one or two days, I'm sure there'd be a good effect. But there's something cumulatively that happens as God just begins to go deeper and deeper and deeper and learning new things about him and, and teaching it. And really the cool thing is like he, it's not like you're being instructed by some guy, you know, sitting, you know, in a suit and a tie or, or you know, lecturing you. Like it's actually being taught by the Lord at, at a heart level. And, um, you know, he uncovers things about yourself that you didn't know were there, both good and bad. And, and you know, he reveals the good and takes away the bad. It's just an amazing experience. Um, that completely has completely changed my mindset about so many different things. Um, I know sometimes people say, well, like that sounds great, but maybe you're just really, uh, really rich. And that's why it's okay for you to uh, take, you know, 10 days off from work just to, to be with God. Greg, what do you think about the financial side of things uh, as you, it relates can, to this? Can you afford to take 10 days off? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think I was actually going to talk a little bit about uh, lifestyle as well like we go through extended periods of spending time with God it could be on a retreat it right. could be in our own personal prayer closet but a lifestyle change is when we start adopting those behavior patterns and pursuit of God every day and um, I think cities can be transformed that way because as we experience God together whether it's a day ten days or a period of time consecrated for his purpose, we change. But what we really experience, that i found, is the love of God and really uh, develop an understanding and deepening our knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. And when we realize like who God is and the breadth and the depth and the height of his love, that, that just is so powerful and sustaining the, the busyness of the world, the concerns about our personal finance and how we're going to get by and all that start to diminish and we start to realize the power of God to be able to get us through whatever we need to. And so for me, it's seeing that transformation where we can adopt it as a lifestyle is a great um, uh, result of, you know, going through these periods of setting aside time. 
right? One of the things I've seen that's so valuable about doing this together, um, not just on your own, because it's great to do something on your own or with a small group, but when it's when there's a, a larger group of people going through this together, there's such a love that develops among the people who are participating. Um, anyway, guys, I know you've seen this too, but just, I mean, that's one of the things that most strikes me is there's this incredible love. And really when we talk about unity, we're talking about love uh, among one another. I mean, we saw an example of that in Connecticut, in Fairfield County, coming together in unity to worship and praise before God and to start to repent, to really start admitting we have not intentionally worked together. We have not, we have judged other churches behind their backs, or we have talked about other ministries in this way or that way, or other people. And to the love that springs from being willing and humble to just admit that and speak about it is amazing. And like how people felt after the release, and we had a time of blessing during that, was just remarkable. And you know, you don't have that on a day-to-day -day basis for a lot of reasons, but during those times, you start to see a window into what could the kingdom of God look like in forever. Right, right, right. And what, what I've experienced, too, is that you'll, you, it's like you'll open up a window, and, um, and then in the season after that, that begins to be almost the new normal. Right. You know, like you, so you experience some breakthrough, there's some new things happening, like what you're talking about, and... Uh, whether it's in prayer and fellowship and love for each other and joy or um, in righteousness, you know, holiness, whatever. And then in the next season, you know, it, it's not quite the same, um, maybe emotional intensity, but you begin to see those things that you experienced maybe for the first time just become like, oh, this is the new normal. This you is how we live. Flow into it. Right, exactly. So it, it's sort of like a, a window that brings the kingdom of heaven in. And then, you know, you once the window's open, you just keep, keep living it out and learn how to live it out on a day-to-day -day basis in the midst of your work and everything else that's going on. Um, any parting shots, guys? So there's a lot of different ways that you can participate in 10 days. You can take part in the citywide gatherings happening in 15 different cities around the country. Um, you can also gather together with your family or your small group or your church, and your church could do 10 days of of prayer and fasting and and really it's it's just about you seeking God about what does this these 10 days look like for me how do you want me to respond to this call of seeking you and devoting my time for these 10 days to you maybe that looks like taking 10 days off of work but maybe for you it doesn't look like that maybe God wants you to spend an hour of devoted time in the morning with him and with other Christians. It can look like a whole different bunch of different ways, but in, for each of us, it's different. So I want to encourage you to seek the Lord about how He would have you participate in 10 days. Just encourage you, yeah, seek God. If you seek God, the Bible says that you will find God. Uh, he's going to show Himself to you. And so seek Him about seeking Him, and then seek Him with us this fall uh, during the 10 days.